Well, here we are at the beginning of another five weeks of the biology of water and health. We're delighted that you're here today for part two. If you missed the first part, you can still see it on edX. And now in the second part of the course, we're going to be talking about important factors such as culture, economics, politics, and technology. And all of those factors will contribute to creating sustainable systems that are going to differ by global context. Well, Jeff, uh, I'm the son of an artist. And as a result, I'm well aware of the fact that the human condition is simply not linear and technical. We will have different perceptions of this art based upon our own history and the context of our lives. And this is true in a global sense. There has to be an authenticity to the solutions that people find. When we look at water and we think about how we need to sustain water, both in terms of quantity and quality, we have to think about context and we have to think about perception. Just as we look here from the heights of the Tufts campus overlooking Boston and we see the physical distance, there's a metaphor here for what's happened in terms of the changes over time. The march of science and technology has shaped our ability to measure contaminants in water. Here, we can recreate the phenomenon that occurs in the ambient environment. Just as the physical layout of the water infrastructure has changed, so has our need to change the educational preparation of students who desire to work at the intersection of water and health. Lots of change to be sure, but that change is also part of an unchanging set of core values which essentially describe the necessity for both high quality water of adequate supply to meet the needs of growing populations, both in the present and also looking into the future.